So just in case you're wondering, the article is called Trajectory of a Projectile. And since it derives it there and gives you the answer, I'm not going to just restate it in the video. And you can extend it back into 3D pretty easily using trigonometry. So what I'm going to cover now is that first the person might not actually be in range. So there is this square root portion of the formula and if that and if the part inside the square root comes turns out to be negative then the then the pro person shooting the projectile is out of range. So let's say we've got this projectile unit here and it's trying to go to the and it's trying to shoot at this projectile unit there and it's out of range the best way to do it is just simply to give a, to keep giving move commands towards the unit and then uh, and then when it's in range then just tell it to stop and then start shooting at it and I know that's pretty basic but when you've got hills it there's no way you're going to be but when you've got hills and the hills are made out of lots of equations is you might as well just do it this way instead of trying to find how much to move forward since that would be very com since yeah that would be very complicated so so far what we've covered is projecting the mouse onto the hills selecting unit Finding the place to move to, figuring out how to get there, collision detection, collision response, hills, and projectiles. And while that may seem like a lot, it's really only the very basics of, the, of math and RTS games. So to conclude this video, I'm go going to show you some of some thing from a professional game called Empire Total War, which as you may hear is extremely buggy, so I don't recommend buying it, but I'll just use it for the purpose of demonstration. So before we get on to this part, there's this one video that you absolutely must watch. So go to the video description and please click the link and watch that video before watching this section. Other Otherwise, you'll be missing the, the whole point. So I'll wait a few seconds. Okay. So I hope you... I'm glad you watched it now. So here's for the question. This is from the third FAQ. How are the physics of naval combat going to work? Are there going to be factors to do with the wind slash weather? So here's the answer. That's cheeky. More than one question and a question is a taste of the cat for you. Not easy to answer in a short Q&A either. Where do I start? In this game, we are looking at trying to create the best and most realistic environment and sea battles you will have ever seen running in real time in a game. Golly. Okay, not bad so far. Ships have buoyancy models that affect their motion through and across the waves. Get a big ho hole in your hull and you will sink. All ships have location modeling of hull damage too. Well that's like, I guess that's kind of simple because uh, you can map out the the damage locations on a grid and then just darken the parts where it's got the holes. But obviously it's more complicated like that. But it's still not too bad. The wind itself is modeled using simplified physics acting upon the ships, the sails, and the sea. Rain, fog, and snow are also weather that will be present in battles. While the simplified physics for wind isn't too bad, that's covered in... That's pretty standard physics. The projectiles fired from cannon for each have their path and velocity tracked individually and so will cause varying amounts of damage to anything, sails, masts, rigging, hull, decks, and men, that block their path. Obviously, a big first straight ship of the line is going to be able to take a pounding, 
A sloop, on the other hand, is going to have to rely on keeping out of the way of big guns. Well, we already covered projectiles, and obviously they are tracked individually, and to and then to cause varying amounts of damage to anything, you just multiply it by some constant for what they're damaging, and maybe even multiply it by the speed that it's going at. So that's simple. As part of creating a realistic sea battle, the sea will be using statistically accurate waveforms found in the sea and the real world. These waveforms are animated using a fast Fourier transform. The sea surface itself is rendered using the Fresnel equation to blend between reflection and refraction. The sea acts upon the ships that sail on them, causing them to roll and pitch. This roll and pitch then affects the accuracy of the gunnery. Have we... So... <coughs> so it's starting to get complicated there. So, but really, there's only two complicated terminology. Fast Fourier Transform and Fresnel Equation. So when I first read that, I looked up online on, on what those are, and they are very complicated. Good luck understanding them. Have we baffled you with technical terms yet? Well, you can look it up for yourself, but we'll assume that the answer is yes. Good. Hope that answers your question. So thanks for watching. I hope you now have a better understanding of math and computer games, and now understand that math class is important if you wish if you want to go into game programming.